Milder conditions finally pushing into town, and fortunately, it is coming with a price. I'm tracking rounds of heavy rain in just a moment. With several areas still covered in water as last week's heavy snow thaws out, emergency management officials in Franklin County are now also monitoring the potential for heavy rainfall. And a nine-year-old boy remains in the hospital this afternoon as Lexington police try to figure out who shot him this weekend. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. What a difference a few days make. We went from 17 inches of snow to end the week to temperatures in the 60s in some places this afternoon. You're looking live at Triangle Park in downtown Lexington. The snow is finally melting and it's starting to feel like spring, but that's not always a good thing. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast and Chris, it feels good out there today. Yeah, it really does. And uh, not too often that you can talk about 60 degree temperatures, at least on more than one occasion, and still be able to see snow on the ground. But that is the case out there now. And look at the cloud cover beginning to stream back in. This is a moisture laden system that is on the way. It's one of two big time systems we're tracking over the next several days. All of those will have some very heavy rains with it. You still see a little snow out there. Let's check on that temperature 55 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. Uh, uh, winds are coming at us from the west and shifting to the southwest. That's a moist flow that is setting up shop over the next several days. Live first alert defender with the temperatures on there 60 degrees into southeastern Kentucky, 63 into Prestonsburg. Those are areas getting in on a little more sun. Now we're seeing those clouds coming in from the southwest and pushing the cloud cover. A big storm system. Moisture coming out ahead of this all the way into parts of the Ozarks now. That is loaded up for bear and arrives in here late tonight and into Tuesday with rounds of heavy rain. That's the first round that we're tracking over the next several days. That likely to drop one to three inches of rain into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. That would be more than enough to cause some local high water issues over the next 48 hours. So we've got to keep an eye on that. Rounds of heavy rain, the increased flood risk, and even Jennifer, the potential. It is March, after all, for some thunder and some lightning to join the party. We'll track the next round when I come back. In just a bit. Thanks. And Chris mentioned the melting snow and more rain in the forecast that have some communities worried about flooding. In Frankfurt, a few roads are closed this afternoon, and emergency management officials are keeping a close eye on the Kentucky River. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is in Franklin County with our top story at four. With many areas like this one along the Kentucky River in downtown Frankfurt still covered in water, emergency management officials are now also monitoring the possibility for heavy rains later this week. It's been a busy month, let's say that. With the lingering snow left from what was nearly two feet now melting, there are several roads and parking lots throughout the county that are impassable and remain blocked off. It is safe to say the Kentucky River is gushing and well above what officials call the normal level. We've dealt with a myriad of problems from a boat dock and a houseboat going down the river uh, to road closures to assistance from people that are stuck on the other side of the roads. However, they say the fact that the river has now crested and is starting to fall is certainly a good thing with rainfall expected. Officials anticipate by Wednesday the river will fall to around 20 feet, which is still 13 feet above normal, but is 11 feet below flood stage. Unfortunately, they also expect it to then start rising again shortly after it goes down. We're setting up for a flooding season right now until the river can get that back down to about eight or nine feet where it belongs. Uh, we're in the grips of Mother Nature right now. With the Kentucky River already up so high, emergency management officials say this could turn into a bad situation very quickly. And that is why they are asking everyone who lives along the river and in other flood prone areas to pay close attention as this rain moves in. In Frankfort, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. As for the roads that are closed, officials expect the water to go down sometime tonight so they can reopen. Too much water in Estill County is causing a shortage. 2,000 households there are without water. Estill County emergency management officials are asking all IMU and Estill Water District customers to conserve water. They're working on problems with the water system caused by the recent flooding. A water distribution center is now set up at the Estill County Fair Barn. Lexington police say they've received tips about the weekend shooting of a nine year old boy, but they still need more clues. Police released this sketch of the suspect. They say the boy was in a car with his parents and three siblings when he was shot in the neck. 
It happened Saturday night on Hollow Creek Road at Russell Cave Road. The boy was taken to Kentucky Children's Hospital with life-threatening injuries. Police say the shooter was driving a white Nissan Maxima. We'll have an update on the investigation coming up at 5. Investigators say two people found inside a burning southern Kentucky home were shot to death. Firefighters found Donnie and Sharon Jackson inside a Laurel County home on Slate Ridge Road yesterday morning. The sheriff's office says both were killed before the fire started and the fire might have been set to cover up the crimes. Their grandson lived with them and police say that he called 911 after finding the house on fire. No arrests have been made. We'll have the latest on this investigation coming up at 4.30. The Kentucky Wildcats are getting ready for the SEC tournament after an undefeated regular season. The top-ranked team in the country knocked off Florida Saturday at Rupp Arena to improve to 31-0. Kentucky has a double bye in the SEC tournament and will open play Friday afternoon at 1 o'clock at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. The game is on the SEC network with the Cats playing the winner of the Florida-Alabama game. Our reporters are working on other stories for WKYT News starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott is in the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. An Ohio man charged with plotting an attack at the U.S. Capitol and who's being held in a Kentucky jail talked for the first time with a reporter about what he'd been planning. Christopher Cornell called a TV station in Cincinnati where he provided chilling insight into the mind of an American who would join ISIS and their current presence in the U.S. But the thing is, we are indeed here in America. We're in each and every state. We're here in Ohio. <laughs> we're here in Ohio. We're in every state. Uh, we're more organized than you think. Coming up on WKYT News at 5.30, you'll hear more from Cornell and we'll explain why the Cincinnati TV station had to go to court in order to release that interview. New technology unveiled today at the University of Kentucky is aimed at keeping students safe. The Live Safe app connects users with the UK Police Department instantly. They can call for help, report tips, or can have someone else monitor their location from the app while walking. We'll have more on how the app works, including how many people have now downloaded it coming up on WKYT News at 4.30. And the heavy rain, sleet, and snow we've had was bad enough for drivers to deal with. Now, drivers all over the area are dealing with potholes. If your car is damaged by a pothole on a state road, you may be eligible for reimbursement. But it has to be a pothole that was not repaired in a timely manner after being reported to the state. We'll take a closer look at pothole repair progress coming up on WKYT News at 5.30. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now to stories making headlines across the nation at four. More testimony today in the Boston Marathon bombing trial. About two dozen survivors, friends, and family have been in the courtroom to listen to the gruesome details. Three people were killed, more than 260 injured when two bombs exploded near the finish line in 2013. Jokar Sarnayev's lawyer says, quote, it was him, leaving no doubt that he committed the attacks, but his attorney is now trying to convince jurors that Sarnayev does not deserve the death penalty because he fell under the influence of his older brother. She's at the center of an email controversy, but former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is not talking about it publicly. So far, her only mention of it was a 26-word tweet she sent last week. Don Champion has the latest. Hillary Clinton has yet to publicly answer questions about Thank her use you. of private email for official business while Secretary of State. The silence is going to hurt her. Republicans are using the likely presidential candidate's silence to attack her. The head of the committee investigating the Benghazi attack says Clinton has not been forthcoming with all of her emails relating to Libya. There are gaps of months and months and months. And if you, if you think to that iconic picture of her on a C-17 flying to Libya, she has sunglasses on and she has her handheld device in her hand, we have no emails from that day. In fact, we have no emails from that trip. 300 emails have been turned over so far. And Democrats point out that Clinton trip to Libya happened a year before the Benghazi attack. While political insiders are following the play by play, it remains to be seen what kind of impact the email controversy will have on voters if and when Clinton enters the presidential race. Usually, you try to put out fires before a campaign so you can have a clean launch. You don't set fires on the launch pad. Potential voters who came to hear Clinton speak say it could be an issue. 
I haven't decided yet. It's a little while before election time. Clinton is expected to make an announcement in April about a presidential run. Don Champion, CBS News, New York. And again, Clinton is expected to make an announcement in April about whether she's running for president. Amazon has set up shop on one of its competitors' websites. Details in WKYT Money Watch. Also ahead, it's Apple's first new device since the iPad. A closer look at this much-anticipated watch and when you'll be able to get one. Coming up on WKYT News at 4.